All right, today I want us to do calculus. It is important that whatever you do in mathematics, you should do it with understanding. Therefore, it is important to understand why calculus was introduced, because we could, we could have done gradient using, using the traditional methods. Uh, just before we go to calculus, I want us to look at this one. If I have a graph like this, y is equals to mx plus c. What type of a graph is that? It's nothing else but a straight line graph. If I'm required to, to sketch that graph, if, to, if, if I'm required to find the equation of that graph, I would actually be required to find two, two things. Number one, the gradient and the y-intercept. Before we go to calculus, I want us to understand more about the gradient. What is m? What is the gradient? Remember that gradient is nothing else but the slope. The slope. Or we can just call it m, which is the change in y over change in x. I want you to notice what I'm writing there. Change in y over change in x, which is nothing else but the gradient. If I'm given two points, I will use the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when we do calculus, we need to understand more about the gradient. It is also important, I'm just unpacking the gradient here. It is also important to know that if my gradient is like position 1 and position 2, if it is like position 1, I should know that my gradient is positive. Position 2, I must know that my gradient there will be negative. Suppose I forget. This usually helps me. If these x-axis this side are positive, and these x-axis this side are negative, if this is my zero. If I'm drawing it from the positive side, the gradient will be positive. If I'm sketching it from the negative side, the gradient will be negative. So that's how we remember it. Remember that I just, before we go to calculus, I want us to understand more about the gradient. Right. Uh, another important thing about the gradient is that if two lines are parallel, the gradient will be the same. And if two lines are perpendicular, then the product of those gradients will be minus one. In other words, if gradient one times gradient two, it will equals to minus one. So all this is important before we get into calculus. Right, I, I want us to get a definition. What, what is calculus? Calculus is nothing else but the study of change. and area, study of change. What is a change? It is nothing else but a difference. Hence, we refer to that as differentiation. And of course, if we go further beyond metric, we'll do integration. But for now, we concentrate on the study of change, the differentiation. It is important to note that Calculus is the study of change. I put this in bold so for us to concentrate on that word. The word change in your mathematical life, where do you usually see it? Think, think deeply. Where do you usually see the word change in your mathematics? Ah, when you do gradient. It is nothing else but the change in y over change in x. That's exactly what we are studying in, 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 in calculus. What is change in y over change in x? It is the gradient. So we are actually studying the gradient. So calculus is nothing else but the study of gradient. But we've been doing gradient from grade eight, grade nine, when we're doing straight line graphs. But why calculus then? I want us to look at that. If I've got a graph like this one, let me just take a parabola, for example. If I have a graph like this one, I'm just gonna do it anyhow. This is my parabola. And I'm looking for the gradient of this graph. Let me just do it in this way. The gradient between point, if, if I call this point A here, I will call this one point B. Right. I'm looking for the, I will look for a gradient of that one. If point A, let me just call this, the X coordinate here, let me just call it A. The X coordinate here, I will call it B. If x is a, what will be y? Let's look here. 
If I have something like this one, <coughs> let me just take any graph for example. If I have a graph of f of x is equals to 2x plus 1. And I'm, I'm saying to you, x is equals to 1. Find y, the corresponding y value there. How would you go about finding the y value there? Ah, wherever there is x, you will substitute 1. In other words, for me to get y, I will have to look for f of 1, which will then be equal to 2 into 1 plus 1. 2 times 1, it's 2 plus 1, which will be 3. So in other words, for me to get that value of y, I was supposed to find what? f of 1. Because I was told that x is equal to 1. So to find, if I'm given that x is equal to 1, and I'm looking for the value of y, I've got to find the f of 1. Now, let's come back here. Since then, now that we're given that a x here is a, what will be the value of the corresponding y value? Ah, it will be f of a. It will be f of a. So the coordinates of this point, it is x is a, and y is f of a. Likewise there, if my x is b, what would be y? y would be f of b. Ah, this would give me the average gradient between those two points, between point A and B. But we know how to find the equation, the, 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 we know how to find the gradient when given two points. We know that we use the formula that m is equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is what we do when we're looking for the average gradient. Let's check if we can find it here. Let's call those twos, let's call these ones. So this will be x2, this will be y2. Close that bracket. So this will be ones, x1 and y1. Remember that my gradient will then be equals to y2. What is y2 in this particular case? It is f of b, f of b minus. What is y1? Yes, it will be here. It will be f of a minus f of a over. What is y2? It will be b minus a. So this formula becomes important when we're looking for the average gradient. This is the formula for the average gradient and you'll be using a lot in your calculus problems. Take note here. If this is f of 2, you will have 2 here. If this is minus f of 3, then you will have 3 here. If you've got a there, I've got a here. If you've got b there, you'll always have b here. That's the idea of the average gradient. Now I want us to take this further. And actually, remember that we are studying gradient. Calculus is the, is the study of gradient. Now, let us study gradient so that we can see why calculus was introduced. Right, if I have, uh, let me just do it in this way. Let me just have this graph here. Uh, let me say the same graph. Let me give you the equation of this graph that I'm gonna sketch here. Let's sketch the graph of f of x. Uh, so I'll need space this side and say f of x uh, is equal to, let's not move it up and down, let's put it in the original state, the mother graph, it will be x squared. Right, if I'm sketching this graph, it will be a graph like this one. Let me just sketch it. This is a typical graph of f of x is equal to x squared. Now, let's take a, a particular gradient. Let's call, I will have one focal point here. If I've got this one, uh, oops. Okay, let, let's just keep it like that. If I've got this point, let's call this point A. Uh, let me just give you coordinates, a distance from here to here. Let's say it's one. Okay, a distance from here to here. Let's say it's five. Say point B is five. Ah, what will be the, the y value there? If I've got my x as one, what will be y? Ah, uh, y will be function of y. It will be f of one. Right, these are the coordinates. What will be the y coordinate of point B there? Same thing, it will be f of five. Okay, if I'm looking for the average a gradient between that point, let's call that point A, B. It's easy. I will say, if I'm required to find M of, let me 
just call it M A B. M A B. It will be equals to F of five, F of five minus F of one over five minus one. The traditional way is that we're finding gradient in grade eight and grade nine. So this is what we have. But we do have our function. This is our machine. This is our function. Ah, f of 5. In other words, where there's x, you push in 5. What do we get? If f of x is this one, now I'm looking for f of 5. So this will be 5 squared. 5 squared. So 5 squared is what? It is 25. So this is the same as 25 minus f of 1. So if I push in 1 here, I'll have 1 also this side. So what is 1 squared? It will be 1. This is over, what is 5 minus 1, it is 4. What is this going to give me? This is 25 minus 1, it will give us 24 over 4, 4, 8, 12, so it's 6. So this will be 6. So the average gradient between A, B, it will be 6. Now, remember that it, we're just studying gradients. I want to see what will happen if I tilt this gradient a bit. I will keep point A as my point of focus. I'm not going to move point A. I want you to, to, to notice what will happen at a particular point that, prompt us, that prompted us to introduce calculus. Now, if I, I adjust my gradient, if I tilt my gradient a bit and put it in this way, maybe for, for point of clarity, let's call this the first B and call it, yes, the first B. Let's call it the second B. Let's call it B2. Let's give coordinates of B. That one was five, it's coming closer this side, let's call it four. So what will be the y value there? It will be f of four. It will be f of four. Then what will be the gradient? If I'm looking for the gradient between a, b, two. Secondly, I, I want us to find the gradient of a, b, two, and see what will happen there. Remember that this is what I'm doing. I'm not adjusting a, it's my focal point. So this will be y two minus y one over x2 minus x1. Let's do this thing. So this then will be, what is our y2? It is f of 4, f of 4, minus f of 1, over, ah, I don't even have to check this one, I'll just bring 4 down, minus 1. <clears throat> okay, let's find the actual values there. This will be what? f of 4, where there's x, we push in 4 now. This will be 4 squared. What is 4 squared? It is 16 in this case. 16 minus, what is 1 squared, f of 1, 1 squared, it will be 1. Remember, this is all over 4 minus 1, which is uh, uh, 3. 16 minus 1, it's 15. 15 over 3, it is 5. Ah. The gradient in this case now is 5. Take note here. What is happening to this gradient? As I move my, 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 my gradient, my, my, as I twist my line into from B1 to B2, it gradient down my neighbor. Take note of that. Let's move on. Let's take another point. Let's do it another. Let's take this thing further. If we tilt this gradient again, we're studying what is happening here. Calculus, the study of gradient. Right, let's call that B3. Let's call this point here, B3. Ah, well, moving this side, let's reduce it by one unit. It's three. This one will be F of three. Right. What will be the gradient there? By inspection, we can simply see that the gradient, the M, A, B, 3, in this case will be F of 3. Let's just do it quickly. F of 3, we'll push in 3 here. It will be 3 squared, which is 9. It's 9 minus 1 squared, which will be 1. Remember, this was F of 3. So this side, we've got 3 minus 1, which will be 2. Right, what is 9 minus 1 in this particular case? It is 8. 8 over 2, it will be 4. Ah, as long as the piece of gradient, you can see that here. Let's look at MAB2. MAB2. You can do this on your own now. You can, you, you're starting to pick up the pattern, what is happening. In other words, if I've got another gradient here, oops, if I have another gradient here, and call this point B4. This one is B4, B4. Uh, this was 4, this is 3, this is 2. If I make it 2, this will be F of 2. What, what is happening there? 
Let's look at it. Let's look at it together. F of 2 minus F of 1. What is F of 2? So it's 2 squared, which will be 4 in this case. It will be 4 minus 1 over. Uh, we're doing F of 2. So it will be 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1. What is 4 minus 1? 4 minus 1 is 3. What is 2 minus 1? It is 1. So it's 3 over 1 in this particular case, which will give us 3. It was important to note that this gradient, as I reduce it. Now, watch here. If I reduce this gradient again, let's reduce it again, ah, until it touches at a single point, at one particular point, until this line is a tangent, what happens there? Let's look at and call this point where it touches this side now. Uh, let's, let us call it B5. Ah, uban u f of u u x u itula u one. So f of x is over ban la paya u f of one. I'm putting this in a different color. Right, let's do this thing and see what will happen. We said we have this one gradient u m a b five. It will be this one, which is f of one minus this other one, which is also f of one over, what is x this side? It is 1 minus 1. Ah, let's see what we have there. What is f of 1? If we push any 1 here, we'll have 1. We'll have 1 minus 1. What is 1 minus 1? This gives us 0 over 1 minus 1, 0 again. Ah, this is okay. Yes, we can have our numerator as 0. This is okay. But this is a problem. Because division by zero at this, at this level is undefined. So what is this saying to us? This traditional method cannot tell us the gradient at this particular point. That's why calculus was introduced. Because calculus is able to find the gradient at that particular point. Hence the importance of it. Right. I think we'll, we'll, we'll break here and, and, and move on in the next set. <laughs>